I don't know about you guys, but lately I've been really excited about Marvel's recent release of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, so much so that I decided to make Falcon's new wings as seen in the new show. So here we see Falcon wears this little jetpack on his back right there, and when he needs to fly, his wings just shoot out of the jetpack and seemingly appear out of thin air. Now I don't think I'm quite good enough to where I can make a giant pair of wings compress into a small little jetpack like we see in all those fancy Marvel CGI scenes, but I nonetheless less challenged myself to see if I could make a foldable pair of wings out of cardboard and try to make them as close to the show as I possibly could. In case you couldn't already tell, these wings were made almost entirely out of just recycled cardboard boxes, so if you're into this kind of stuff, you should subscribe because I'm pretty sure I'm the only person crazy enough to make a giant pair of falcon wings out of cardboard. Or Maybe I'm not crazy, maybe there's one of you out there that wants to make these falcon wings too. And if that's the case, I made some free downloadable templates which you can find the link to in the description box below. So now as usual, just sit back and enjoy this video as I show you how I made falcons expandable wings out of cardboard. First things first, I made some templates and transferred them onto cardboard. Now these templates were probably the hardest part of the entire build. And that's because each of these individual pieces, when assembled together, should be able to expand and contract smoothly. And it took quite a bit of trial and error to get these pieces to not only function correctly, but also to look the part. Because remember, these aren't just any wings, these are falcon wings, which have a very specific shape. I used my box cutter to cut out all the pieces, and to get the smoothest, cleanest cuts, I made sure to use a really sharp blade, of course. Now we're going to need to make some holes in all these pieces so that they can be hinged and connected together. To make the holes, I simply stabbed the cardboard with a pin and then gradually increased the size of the hole until I got it to the right size. Using my box cutter, I cut off any excess paper left over and to make sure the holes don't expand or rip over time, I just went over all of them with some super glue to strengthen them. Fast forward, I repeated that exact process to cut out all the rest of the pieces and here's what they all look like. Alright, so let's set aside all those pieces for now and we'll just focus on this one right here. As you can see, there's a little indent in the cardboard right here and the way I did that is just by slicing and peeling away the top layer of cardboard while leaving the bottom layer uncut. The purpose of this indent is to insert this magnet right here, so I went ahead and secured that magnet on using a couple layers of duct tape. And uh, it's important to mention here that there's actually a little hole in the magnet which will come into play later on. So I made sure to cut out that hole in the duct tape right there. As you can see, I followed these exact same steps for both the left and the right wing. And uh, stick around because later on you'll see exactly what these magnets are for and how it's all going to work together. Now it's time to connect all these individual pieces together which should form one giant expandable wing. So I'm going to connect all the hinge points together using these round head fasteners here which are very convenient and uh, easy to attach and detach which is great because later on we'll need to be able to detach all these pieces in order to paint them. Since this project is very large, the template I made for this is a little bit different than usual but it's still pretty straightforward as long as you know what you're doing. So let me give you a rundown of how the template works. Basically on the template I made there are numbers and letters. So the numbers represent the 6 individual pieces that I showed you, while the letters represent the edges that you need to tape together. So it's, it's kind of like a puzzle. Uh, so for instance, let's say you wanted piece number 3, right? So what you would need to do is cut out and gather all the pieces that have the number 3 on them and then from there you just tape together all the edges according to the letters that you see. So you, you basically match side A with side A, side B with side B, and so on and so forth. Like I said, this project is very large and I had to use some pretty big boxes for this. So if you're looking for large cardboard sheets like this, I recommend going to places like uh, Costco or Ikea. Uh, those are usually the places where I find the largest sheets and at times I've even asked the workers if they can give me some cardboard and typically they'll have no problem doing so because they're just going to get rid of it in the recycling anyway. So now the moment of truth, I flexed the wing for the first time and lo and behold the wing just jammed up on me and very quickly I realized it was because some of the fasteners that I put on were blocking some of the pieces from being able to slide past each other. So I easily fixed that by adding some tape to make the surface flat and smooth enough to where the pieces could easily glide over each other like this. I guess I just forgot to account for this while I was designing the templates. Then at this point I thought to myself, wait a second, I'm being kind of a dummy here. Instead of using the tape as a solution, I got rid of that and realized why not just trim the pieces down so that they don't interfere with each other. So yeah, duh, I, I mean I don't know why I didn't think of that at first. But anyway, just so you know, all the template pieces will be in their final form after I made all the changes. 
so you don't have to worry about trimming any of these pieces down or anything like that. Speaking of the template, this is as far as the template will get you, so that's it. Any pieces that I make from here on out in the build are not in the template simply because I don't want to make the template unnecessarily large or anything, and uh, this is pretty much the hardest part, so you really don't need templates past this point. Alright, so moving on, now I made some very simple pieces out of binder board, which is that material that board games and hardcover books and notebooks are made out of. The binder board is nice because it's a lot more rigid and durable than regular corrugated cardboard, especially when you kind of soak it in a bit of super glue. So these two pieces are going to get glued onto the wing in such a way that will allow for a string to be attached to the wing and then when you pull on that string the wing will expand open. So for the string I'm going to use some fishing line because it's pretty transparent and it'll be less noticeable which is nice. So what I'm going to do here is just tie a double knot around the binder board here and pull that really tightly and then add some super glue to make sure the knot doesn't come undone. Then after the string is tied, I can feed the other end of the string through the other binder board piece, pull that all the way through, and then feed the rest of the string through the hole in the magnet right there. Okay, so now that that's done, here's what the string should look like, right? So we have the string, starts here, passes through the binder board, through the magnet, and now you can pull on that string and the wing will expand open like this. Now we still have one problem here and that is that the wing can't support its own weight and it just falls in the direction of gravity so we need some way to be able to lock it in position. And that's where these four little 8x5 neodymium magnets come into play and what these will do is keep the wings locked in the open position and keep them locked in the closed position as well. By the way I'll leave a link below to where I got these magnets as well as the rest of the materials I used for this build. At this point I added some extra reinforcement to this corner here, uh, reason being is that this section, this, this area right here is going to need to be able to withstand the whole weight of the wing basically, so that part definitely needs to be reinforced. I also added some cardboard to the magnet to protect the duct tape because later on this magnet will be sliding against another magnet. So now the wing is finally done and I repeated that whole process for the other wing, so now we have two wings. Now I'm not actually going to make the jetpack in this video, maybe in another video, but either way I still need something to wear on my back, which is this piece right here. Just a disclaimer though, some of those measurements are actually irrelevant because later on you'll see that I ended up altering this piece slightly, but uh, nonetheless I figured I'd include those measurements anyway because they'll probably be helpful to anyone out there who's going to make these wings. As you can see, I'm now just laying down a whole bunch of popsicle sticks and uh, the purpose of this is just to make the whole piece rigid and durable so that it doesn't bend and fall apart when I try to wear it on my back. Once I laid down all the sticks, I made some simple straps out of black duct tape, fed those through the slots that I pre-cut and then secured them on tightly. At this point we can attach the wings to the backpack, but before we do that let's just go ahead and feed the string through that little hole right there and then pull that all the way through. And this is basically this area right here, that's where you need to pull to release the wings. To attach the wing to the backpack I'm going to connect these two points together here. Now this fastener that I'm putting on is just temporary and that will eventually get replaced with a nut and a bolt because a regular fastener is just not strong enough for this part. Now that the wing is attached to the backpack, you can see that it can swing in and out, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so pay attention now to these two pieces here. Those are essentially going to act as stoppers so that the wings can't swing past a certain point. And I made those stoppers out of binder board, which worked out really great. So now that I've put the stoppers in place, you can see that I've kind of put a limited range of motion on the wing here, so it can only swing up to a certain point. And just for good measure, I decided to add some extra popsicle sticks as well because I really wanted to make sure that this was going to hold up, right? Because when the wings swing out, they're basically going to like slam against those stoppers. So I really wanted to be confident that those stoppers were going to hold up. Earlier, I mentioned that some of the measurements I displayed were inaccurate. And uh, here, this is what I mean. I actually trimmed this piece down a little bit because I felt like it could be a little bit smaller. But in the process of doing that, I kind of got rid of these two holes here. So I just had to recut those holes on the newly trimmed piece, as you can see. I'm going to now hide all those ugly popsicle sticks by just covering them up using some cardboard so that way the popsicle sticks aren't visible while I'm wearing the wings because that would look pretty ugly. 
Alright, well now it's time for me to give you a full rundown of how this all works, so let me show you a demo of this whole thing in action. So remember those two giant magnets that I glued onto the wings? Well basically those two magnets will meet together and keep the wings locked in the closed position so when the wings are fully collapsed they are being locked by these two magnets here like this. To open the wings you just tug on the fishing line and what that will do is make the two magnets disconnect at the top and gravity will cause the wings to kind of swing out like this and once the wings swing to the bottom the two magnets will meet once again and lock each other in the open position this time. Once you continue to pull on the fishing line, the wings will continue to expand open until they are fully expanded out like this. Then to collapse the wings, you just basically do all of that in reverse and the two magnets will connect at the top and keep the wings locked in the closed position once again. And this right here is as small as the wings can possibly get when they are fully collapsed. So once I was happy with how that all turned out, it was now ready for paint. So what I had to do here is just make some simple templates in order to mark out each section of color. And after that, I took apart the whole wing and also just labeled all the sections so I could easily keep track of what color to paint each section. Of course, I had to mask off all the unwanted areas and I just used a bunch of scrap paper to do that since this project is so large. Initially, I used just some regular scotch masking tape, but then I later switched over to painter's tape because the masking tape just wasn't quite cutting it and uh, the paint was bleeding through. Now normally with like smaller projects I can just get away with using regular masking tape but with a project this large it would take like absolutely forever to go over all the mistakes and do all the touch-up paint so that's where the blue painter's tape came in handy here. Like I mentioned earlier I'm gonna use a nut and bolt to attach the wing to the backpack. Uh, these nuts and bolts were from an old skateboard so this is just standard skateboard hardware and I can use a screwdriver and a 10 millimeter wrench to secure that on there nicely. There's a few more details we have left to do so let's use this paint pen to add all those lines along the wing here. The reason I'm using a paint pen as opposed to something like a sharpie is so that I can lay on some tape here and then peel away some of the ink and leave behind sort of a faded line which looks a lot better this way. Next I'm going to use some electrical tape to add a border to the bottom of the wing and electrical tape works very well for this because it's very flexible and it can follow the direction of the curve as you can see. And then from here I just took a sharpie and drew on the rest of the details. Finally, all that was left to do was just super glue down all of the fasteners to make sure they stay on permanently. Before we cut to the final reveal of these wings, this video was sponsored by Skillshare. In case you've been living under a rock, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. So let's say you want to get better at graphic design, or you want to know more about filmmaking, or 3D printing, or whatever the case may be. Skillshare's got your back and is incredibly valuable for those aspiring makers, designers, artists, entrepreneurs, etc. Personally, I just recently found a class on Skillshare taught by Thomas Frank called Productivity for Creatives which I found had some really insightful advice about how to nurture your creativity through productivity. You do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. So when you can build a system like this, you fall here instead of here. Skillshare is less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. Now hold on a second, couldn't you just learn everything on YouTube? Well, technically, yes, you could, but in life, you get what you pay for, and with Skillshare, everything is premium, all the classes are taught by qualified people, there are no ads, and everything is carefully crafted and curated. So what are you waiting for? Head over to Skillshare today, and lucky for you, I've teamed up with Skillshare to give you a special offer. The first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity today.